I'm going to start out this video by giving you ample warning about its content. I'm going to be discussing prosthetic penises. If you don't want anything to do with that, then just go. You, this is your chance. Close the window or navigate away. You don't have to watch this. Whatever, it's not your thing. Just, just, just go. Um, it's probably not safe for work here. You're going to see phallic objects. So if you're not into that, just, just navigate away. And this is your opportunity, and it is gone. Let's talk about look and feel. Uh, I have uh, Mr. Limpy Extra Small to compare it against. I've been packing with it about a year, so when I show it to you, it might look a little worn out and whatnot. But I'm also talking from experience when I first got it and it looked brand new. As far as the, the shaft goes, I think that the Peacock is much more realistic. It's got veins and um, the skin looks more like skin. Um, it's, it's pretty sweet. Um, Mr. Limpy's just really ridgy. Uh, I suppose that, that looks like how a flaccid penis folds a little bit, but I don't think that's what we're going for with this. Um, the glands on the peacock is more realistic in my opinion. I mean, we've got the the remnant of the foreskin here. It's it's obviously circumcised, but it looks like a lazy circumcision job, which I kind of like. I, I'd ideally get an uncircumcised packer, but they don't really exist uh, for my price range. And the the slit at the front looks more real, realistic than Mr. Lumpy here. It looks kind of weird. Uh, the balls are definitely less realistic on the peacock. I mean, did you even try? There isn't the seam here. They don't really look like skin or even hairy skin here. They're just kind of lumpy and weird looking and they're, sp they're a lot smaller than they, they should be. The texture isn't real. They're very firm and they don't separate, but this this is a STP device that isn't a realistic packer, so I can't fault it too much for that. Um, but they are more realistic on Mr. Limpy, which is like a $12 packer. You've got the seam here, and um, it actually looks like um, scrotal skin, which is pretty neat on the Mr. Limpy, considering how cheap it is. But yeah, they didn't even try on the peacock balls, I don't think, either. They didn't get a good mold, or the material just didn't take to the mold well. I don't know. The, if you're really concerned about testicles and scrotum of your packer, don't get the peacock, okay? Because they're lame. On to feel and texture. Um, it's very sticky, just like Mr. Limpy without cornstarch, but you're not going to want to cornstarch it because you're peeing through it and um, it's it's going to get sweaty and the cornstarch just isn't going to stay, so it's, it's, it's not really worth your time. It's going to collect lint and animal hair if you have pets, just kind of work with it. I don't really think that's a huge complaint. How it feels in the pants, um, I'm actually kind of impressed with. It's actually collapsible, like my experience with actual penises. Mr. Lumpy doesn't do that. It kind of bounces back and has pretty high resilience in the uh, material. I think this is partially because um, there's a urethra or whatever through this a hole, so there's a place for it to collapse. Um, it doesn't, it, it's a bit firmer than my, my husband's penis, but it, it's about on par with um, my experience with my ex. Uh, the only way it's not going to pass like a, a grope test or a squeeze test is if it, it, it makes popping noises when you collapse it together and it kind of, you can kind of feel that, that popping, but you don't feel it as much through pants, so I wouldn't be too concerned if somebody gropes you at a gay bar or whatever, you're not going to have an issue. You should be fine. Packing. Five and a half inches or 14 centimeters is a lot to pack flaccid. It is, it, I'd say it's rather above average for um, typical cis male flaccid penises, at least from what I've seen. Um, it's a lot to deal with if you're used to the extra small Mr. Limpy. And um, packing with it is a different experience. It actually doesn't create as big of a bulge because um, the balls are rather small on it and you have to maneuver the shaft. If you're wearing briefs, you're going to want to put it 
horizontal and down if you can, or just horizontal. Don't put it up, don't put it to the side, don't tuck it under. A cis male would never do that because it would hurt. This is what my husband has explained to me, so I'm just forwarding this information to you. For boxers and boxer briefs and trunks, you're just going to put it down the leg. It's what a cis male would do with this much length or with a boner or something. Again, this is what my husband has told me. So, down the leg. When, when you're looking at it, it doesn't, in trousers, it doesn't create that much of a bulge, especially in like skinny jeans. I actually like that because it doesn't look like I have a boner, which was a, an actual concern of mine. It's not a very sizable bulge when you're, you're packing to the side or down your leg. I like how it feels when I'm packing. It actually comes closer to my anatomy and it feels like part of me where Mr. Limpy doesn't quite feel like that. I like how, how the length feels. I, I thought I wouldn't, but I actually do like it. Let's move on to voiding. The Gen 2 Peacock actually has two major improvements that allow it to be a better STP device than the first one. There are a lot of complaints about it. The first being that the funnel wasn't big enough to collect urine, so it would constantly backflow. That's not an issue with this. It has a very sizable funnel, much like the Go Girl, and does a pretty good job. I don't have many issues with backflow so long as my bladder isn't bursting full. The other major modification is that the um, slit is not circular, it is rectangular, much like a cis male penis, um, and that allows for a more consistent, uh, directed stream. Uh, the Go Girl act actually has this feature as well, but the this is better than the Go Girl in my opinion because it has uh, a shaft that you can direct flow with nicely. That's actually another nice feature of 14 centimeters, five and a half inches, is that you've got a lot of control with it, which is nice, especially if you're not used to STP at all. I got it the first try uh, when I used this. I, I, I did it, you know, without pants or underwear first, so I wouldn't accidentally have backflow on them, but it, it fit to my anatomy nice. Um, there, there was a seal, and I, I didn't have trouble, it's much easier than a medicine spoon for me. So how I figured out how to use this is that um, with the harness I use, um, it actually keeps it really close to my body. It's a jock strap basically with a hole in the front. You can probably make your own, but make sure they're tight so it holds it close to your body. What I do is I, um, I, I slide this down so it's positioned, the balls are positioned over the vagina and the back part of the funnel here is right before the anus and make sure it's it's tight but the the harness I use actually does that for me I just hold uh, pull hold back out of security but it not too hard or I uh, will collapse the funnel then I let out a test whiz to make sure everything's not leaking right out right it's not going to come through the shaft because of how it's designed um, it requires a substantial amount of liquid to start going. I practiced in the shower going full stream just to see what backflow feels like before it happens so that I, I know how to s when to stop when I'm urinating if it's about to backflow, which is helpful. I recommend doing that just so you know when it's going to happen, but it is pretty forgiving. You know when it's going to happen once you, you felt it, so you know when to stop. Um, the major difficulty I've had with STP is I get really piss shy. It's really hard to relax. A um, couple things I try to do is uh, take a deep breath and um, visualize that I'm sitting on the toilet and that seems to help most of the time. Uh, that's just getting used to standing to pee. There's going to be fluid left here so you, you, you kind of learn how to squeeze the balls up and um, shake in a way that'll empty the fluid but not put it out through your underwear. Don't worry about this at a urinal. Um, it, it should pass. The, the, the skin tone for light beige is about an average of the tones on a cis penis, which is nice. They're, it's not a realistic painted or shaded prosthetic, so I wasn't expecting it to be much more realistic. I'm not nervous about using this in public. I've had enough practice at this point after one day. It's not really a steep learning curve. The last feature of this is play, but I wasn't intending to use this for it, but I'll review what I know about it so you get an idea. Um, 
This is the erection rod. The improvement of this over the Gen 1 is that there's this flare at the end, which also will accommodate what they call the pleasure kit, which you can get for 15 extra dollars, I think. Extra USD. Um, the problem I have with it, though, and it's because uh, is due to the manufacturing process, there's this ridge around the, the top, and it's pretty sharp. I think it would damage your prosthetic over time, so I'd recommend sanding that down if you're going to be using it a lot for play, because every time you pull back, I think it kind of scratches and tears into the, the, the silicone. So, you definitely want to sand that down so it isn't sharp at all. It's not that hard to get in, even though it's the peacock's pretty sticky. Um, takes a little bit of force to get it in. The erection rod ends right before the glands, so I imagine um, it'd be difficult to, to penetrate um, for anal sex or somebody who has a particularly tight vagina, um, just because it's so squishy up here. But that's a little analogous to a cis penis anyway. Use enough lube and um, right angle pressure, it should be fine. I'm not that impressed with the the erection here. Um, it's it's pretty sad and droopy even when it's pressed up against you. It doesn't look like an erection, really. Some cis penises will do that where they're just kind of droopy, but laying down it's not even going to push back because of how the, the flare is. It doesn't look that cool. I don't like that. You you probably aren't that concerned with it anyway, though, if you're wanting to play with this. Um, as far as feel, I, I, I think that it feels semi-realistic as an erection. It's a little squishier on the sides than it should be, and obviously the rod doesn't have enough give to really feel like a cis penis, but... It's, it's a prosthetic, and you, you're not paying for high-quality play prosthetic. This is a 3-in-1, so... I'd say it does a satisfactory job, considering... Uh, when you're using this for um, penetrative sex, make sure you use condoms if you're not monogamous and have been both tested, because you can still transmit disease with this if you don't use condoms. Um, even if, if you wash it with antibacterial soap and everything, there's a chance you'll have bacteria riding back on this, and you don't want to give other people sexually transmitted diseases, so be safe. I know you can't get them pregnant, but you can give them a disease, and that's really inconsiderate to not use protection. Overall, I'm really impressed with it. I really like it. It feels like part of me. It allows me to stand and pee with, without fidgeting with my stuff at the urinal much. Um, I really, really like it. I use it ma mostly for packing and peeing, and it's great. I'll use it for play, but I'm sure it'd be satisfactory for that, too. I think it was worth the uh, money I paid for it. I think it came to 216 with shipping I paid for FedEx IE. They actually shipped it IP. I got it in two days from when they shipped it. I didn't even think it's possible it's coming from Singapore. It actually got processed and shipped faster than most domestic packages I get, so don't worry that it's from Singapore if you're paying for FedEx. It's gonna get there on time for you. I'm gonna post a link to my text review, which actually probably has more information and is a bit more concise. It actually has links to pictures of what it looks like in um, various underwear and trousers which should be helpful. I'll put that link in the description or wherever it is, you should be able to find it and look at that review. Thanks for your time, I hope I was helpful.